Welcome back to another episode of the Dunwoody Dialogues. I am Mark Galvin, your host, and this show is produced by Discover Dunwoody. We love that you're here. We love that you're back. We have more and more people watching these shows. And so if you would like to see more after watch today's, don't go anywhere, watch this episode. But if you want to look for others, we always chat with a mix of fascinating folks out there from movie mavens to local stars to trail traveling trailblazers. You know we're going to talk to really fascinating people, so don't miss out. Go check out our feed. But today, we have an absolutely terrific person with us. We have a meetings industry VIP. She's well known in the meetings industry in the state of Georgia. Join me in welcoming Wendy Cavanaugh to Dunwoody Dialogues. Wendy, welcome. So glad you're here. Thank you for having me today. I will tell you, you are one of those people in the industry, especially growing up in the hospitality business mm -hmm. in Georgia. Your name is kind of, you know, it's, it's just the standard kind of like Kleenex is really <laughs> facial tissue. And Wendy Cavanaugh is the leadership name inside the meetings industry in Georgia. It really is really cool. Thank you. Have you ever been connected to Kleenex before? I've not been connected to Kleenex nor Xerox for that matter. <laughs> Well, well, at least Kleenex is still around. Well, we are thrilled <laughs> that you are bringing your brand Thanks. to Discover Dunwoody. And you are the president mm -hmm. of Georgia Society of Association Executives, which in our industry, we just affectionately call your organization GSAE. Correct. And you're the president of GSAE, which I think is a curious title. I'm used to associations having, I'm the incoming president, I'm the outgoing president. Mm -hmm. But with GSAE, that's not the case. Explain your title sure. with GSAE. Um, so for, and it's, and it's always interesting. Associations never like to um, not embrace change. And so my title was originally executive director, a title which had been held by all of the previous executive directors from time memorial. Um, and around 2008, Y'all may be aware there were some changes with some reporting that we were doing with our 990s with the IRS, um, and titles came up. Um, and we realized that our board chair um, had been called the president, um, and there was a real movement to call a chair of the board a chair of the board. Hmm. Um, and so to differentiate, several of our groups started using the title CEO or chief staff officer. Um, and president happened to be one that several trade groups um, started utilizing. And so GSAE kind of fell in with that. Um, we also have several in our community that serve this role, this chief staff officer, this paid staff officer role, um, that are also known as executive vice presidents, CEOs. You've got some CEO and presidents out there. Um, but really our roles yeah. are the same. Sure. It is, well, I think it's really fascinating because of the, explaining that title is, is a big deal because you are an organization of association executives and you probably have a lot of executive directors that are members and may Absolutely. not see you in the same way because your title is president, not executive director. I work for my peer group. Yeah. Um, a lot of people m talk about herding cats when you're working with volunteer leaders. Um, m almost all of my volunteers could do my job. Um, luckily for me, they don't want to do my job. They want to <laughs> let me have my job. Um, but it is um, a very unique position to be in in serving your peer group. Sure. Um, but it's where my passion comes from. Oh, I love um, that. Helping yeah. my colleagues and my peers be better at their jobs. So you've been in your role since 2005. Correct. Wow, 2005. So in 2008, the economy went belly up. Yes, it did. So I'm sure you have been through your challenges since 2005, mm -hmm. but you also run an association management company where you started your own association management company called Tessera. Did mm -hmm. I say that right? That's close enough. How do you, how do you say, how was it? Tessera Association Management. Okay, um, thank you for that. That's okay. And and so you were, you were, running associations mm -hmm. at your organization, you probably were connected with GSAE and probably Absol had ears to the ground when sure. this role came up. Absolutely. Um, I was actually a member of the board of directors. Oh, looky there. Um, my okay. term was ending um, and I did resign from the board um, before I 
before I applied for the role, um, and I was incoming chair of our foundation. So I had been a volunteer with GSA myself since about 1996. Oh my goodness. Yes. So you know it well. You've done a lot of other things. You worked with the International Association of for Financial Planning. Mm -hmm. Planning planners. Planning. Planning, which is affectionately known. See, it's so funny. I know all these acronyms. I don't know all the words. The uh, IAFP, which is a, a very important organization in our space. You also worked with Phi Mu Fraternity, which is my daughter is a member of Phi Mu. So, boy, it's a small world. Got a BA in English from UGA. All right, I got to ask you about this. Go dogs. <laughs> yeah, boy. Go dogs. Yes, go dogs. So... Is English a good degree to get today? Oh, what a hard question since my son just graduated from Georgia back in um, a couple of years ago with the same English oh, degree. Oh, really? He did. So would you encourage young people to consider this degree? Um, I think that I would consider a young person to look at a humanities degree. Yeah. I still think there's a lot of value. I know you have some questions about AI later. Um, bringing your humanity to your professional life is so key. Um, it's one of the things that, that we talk about within GSAE, particularly around our leadership development. And so I think a humanities degree that's broad based. Um, my first job um, with an association was as a newsletter editor. Wow. Um, I edited newsletters, um, did a lot of content production. Um, and even to this day, we have a magazine that comes out four times a year. Um, and I'm one of the, I'm working with our paid editor to to get that that theme. Sure. Um, so I, I use it every day. Yeah. I think, personally, I've always thought it's a great degree. I need to make sure that parents out there, please do not email me about this. I know great college admissions counselors that I will hook you up with. <laughs> don't, don't, I don't, don't call me yeah, about this. You don't, she's not there to help with that. <laughs> no. I, I think that... Once they're out of school, absolutely, yeah. we're your people. We, have, we will have many systems that will help people write moving forward. But I do think the ability to be creative on mm -hmm. your own is, is such an important element. And be a good communicator. A hundred percent. And if you're a good communicator, you can go anywhere. So That's true. I love that. Now, I heard a rumor that you have a, a multi-decade old gecko in your house. Is that right? I do indeed have a 23-year-old gecko. 23? Her name is Coco. Oh, my gosh. She was a bribery gift for my son when he found out we were having a girl um, for, when he was four. And, yes, she is still in my home. She's in so, my basement, and she eats crickets. So that's why you know the gecko is 23. The, because the age of, of the gecko <laughs> is, exactly. is connected to your daughter. Four years younger than the son. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so um, I think that's really cool. I didn't know geckos could li live to 23 years old. So I don't know if that's a warning for anybody out there considering a gecko, but I just think it's really cool that you have a gecko. She's um, lovely. Yeah, that's really cool. I know that you also take care of cats. We've taught, we've had so many things that we've gone down. You know, we got to get to the meat of things. But <laughs> I also hear if I have a cat, you, you'll adopt cats. Is that right? Um, I will certainly help you find a home for a cat if you <laughs> find not, a if you find a cat on the street. Cat. I'm not going to take your cat. I have three of my own. <laughs> oh, very good then. Okay, let's talk a little bit about GSAE. What is GSAE? And I'd love for you to share the relation sure. of GSAE to ASAE. Absolutely. Um, so GSAE is the professional organization for staff of professional societies, trade organizations, and other nonprofits within the state of Georgia. Although, interestingly enough, um, we have several folks that work remotely for nationally based organizations that are outside of Georgia. Um, the other part of our membership are corporate supplier members, and those are people who provide goods, services, a lot of hospitality, a lot of meeting services um, to people that are in associations. That's great. So a hotel salesperson that wants to book group business in their hotel would be a member of GSAE. Absolutely, right? we would want them to be a member of GSAE. 
as well as DMOs, destination marketing mm-hmm. organizations like us and convention and visitors bureaus, they want to be members. Why? What, what, do, what do they benefit by joining? The connectivity to an association person who is going to be able to book a business, set of business, um, piece of business in their in their city, sure. in their hotel. Um, we also have service providers, um, a lot of technology companies, some financial services, insurance, um, anyone that's looking to do business with a nonprofit organization in Georgia, we hope that we're creating those connections. That's um, so important. And helping raise yeah. brand awareness and visibility. So is it true that associations and societies make a lot of revenue by holding events is absolutely that, so that's the main reason they do that isn't it well one and, of the, and one of the side benefits is revenue but there's certainly other reasons. um well and for most organizations our primary business is serving our membership training our members providing that professional development that right. makes each of them better at their jobs um and so meetings in-person meetings are a great opportunity to do that. It's a very traditional opportunity. Certainly after COVID, we saw a lot of change in the meetings industry, and I think we're still coming out of some of those changes. Um, For those of us that that serve a statewide organization or a nationwide organization, the ability to give them professional development in a hybrid or um, a virtual way and do it well Prior to COVID, you know, people were experimenting with it, but mostly it was just the large organizations. Sure. Um, but you really can't, you can't underestimate the power of putting a group of people in a room under a common cause. It is still so important for us to get together in it person. Is. I absolutely agree. So GSAE did not, has been around a long while. As a matter of fact, in our pre pre-interview conversation you told me that gsa started in 1917 what was it called then it was called the executive secretaries club of atlanta Um, and it was of course a group of men who served in staff roles um, for these organizations Um, and asae we we mentioned the relationship Um, we say we're friends not family um, although we have an enormous overlap of members and our mission to make association and association stronger um, by training staff. Um, We've got a lot of overlap there. We do a lot of partnerships, cross-promoting of of opportunities for people to connect and to learn. Um, But yes, we're actually three years younger than than the ASAE. I thought that's fascinating. mm -hmm. So it's the American Society of Association Executives is ASAE. Mm -hmm. I really thought they started and then Georgia Society of Association Executives started afterwards. But no, Mm -hmm. you started before them by some three years. And I think that's I think it's really interesting. So do most of your members or do you even know what the mix is? How many members belong to GSAE and ASAE? It's usually about 40%. Okay. So mm-hmm. not, this isn't a common thing where they're automatically, they're going to join no. both. No. And over the years, um, and, and the relationship has changed. Um, at one point, there was a dual membership. Um, okay. That was a test pilot for a few years. Um, at one point, we were an allied society and had a more formal agreement. Um, at this point, our memorandum of understanding really relates to promotion of events, um, particularly around their annual meeting. So ASAE was in Atlanta a few years ago. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. And so there was a relationship there. Absolutely. You guys were, it, was it a co-sponsor? Was it co We worked with, through Atlanta CVB. Okay. Um, so they, gosh, Atlanta had over 300 volunteers they recruited. Oh my. Um, and a large part of those, those recruited volunteers came out of AS, GSAE's sure. um, membership. And it was just a super opportunity to showcase our city. I think that's really cool. All right, I'm going to shift gears here. Sure. And I want to, let's talk about professional development. Um, GSAE provides f- professional development opportunity for growth um, and beyond for all those members. What does that look like for your members? So we talked about that in-person 
meeting and how important that is. So we, of course, have an annual meeting every year. Um, we go across the southeast. The board is is charged with choosing the location based on our recommendations. Um, and that is about two and a half days. Okay. 10 plus hours of what we call continuing education credit. For us, it's the Certified Association Executive designation. I know, say that, that it's 80 lot. times yeah, fast. Yeah. Um, but the CAE credit hours are really important to our members. Um, it provides kind of a framework for learning. Okay. Um, we have domains that are um, a, a known quantity in association management, the things that we think you should know about and be competent um, and be able to implement. Um, and so we do a lot of our education around whether it qualifies under one of those nine domains. Oh, I think that's terrific. And so, so important. I think you have this data point, and I want to tease it out. Associations in general across the entire country educate a lot, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Is there, how many, um, you know, what is it, number of hours or, or members? How many people in the U.S. are getting educated through their associations or societies? 9.7 million Americans annually are educated through associations. So this is, in, all those, and some of you have been through some of this education. You belong to a society or an association, and you pay a membership fee, and you go to them to get educated on whatever it is about your organization. You know, if, if I was in the, the professional widgets major mm -hmm. makers association, I could go to the association and learn how to make that widget better or learn about new technologies mm -hmm. and, or what is the innovation that's ha hit, hit that space. That is an incredible number of people that are continuing to learn, which mm -hmm. it's, we are lifelong learners. It's not finished when we get our diploma, Absolutely. diplomas uh, in some cases. This is really fascinating to me. There's also opportunity. I think this is a bit of a sidebar. There are opportunities that all associations and maybe GSAEs looking at on how that can be paid for. Is there an opportunity sure. on the 529 plan yes. that's you know i know we're scratching the surface but it's kind mm -hmm. of interesting to me well and also from gsa's standpoint one of the things that's been most important to us is providing a variety of education pieces not just an in-person but also virtual um providing some hybrid we've already through october we've provided over 63 potential hours of education wow. to just our members. And we're a small organization. And that's just 63 hours of training you've done. You may have had exactly. 30 people in those mm -hmm. classes. Okay. Right. right. Um, but talking about the 529 plan, um, and this is another great opportunity to talk about the partnership with ASAE. Their public policy department's top notch. And they have a bill that has gone through right now, we're, we're waiting to see what the next iteration of it, but tomorrow's workforce. You would be able to take money from a 529 plan and use it toward a professional certification. Wow. We've got some wow. parameters around it. Um, you'd wanna make sure that that certification program is of course, you know, been, been blessed um, by the education field. Um, but it's, it's a tremendous opportunity to, expand our ability to develop help develop the workforce and for anyone who's, who doesn't know about the 529 plans this is a tax-free place to put money that can go to education and other spaces mm -hmm. and to to add it to add continuing education to that space it makes total sense send an email to your representative you can probably get some help there that would be I uh, would be, be great so for happy to, to put you in yeah. touch with the right people i love that all right so I want to speed up and ask this question. How does GSAE make new members feel welcome and connect them with other members? Absolutely. We have a quite intensive process. Um, and for us, we say that we want our members to be welcomed, informed, connected. So everything we do from the original introductory phone call, thank you for joining. And again, all done by volunteers. This is not staff going out and making these phone calls. Um, we have an email drip system that's on a, using AI because it's very smart. Sure. Um, our system of drip marketing saying, hey, we noticed you joined, but you haven't come to anything yet. 
or if they do join us at a meeting, we have an orientation in person or online um, to say this is how you get better involved with GSAE. Here are the people that can help you be better at your job. Here are the connections that do what you do. Um, I think that's so powerful when it comes to association management. I think it's, I love that. And it is hard if you're brand new into an organization. It's, it's actually daunting in some ways. It can be. Come to a meeting, you don't know a soul, mm -hmm. and, and getting a way to helping those people get connected to at least one person, having a buddy that can mm -hmm. help them move along. Even to say, and I, I can absolutely hear this call from friends of mine, what am I supposed to wear to this meeting? Having those oh, yeah. questions answered mm -hmm. is so important. It is. Making a comfortable space. Um, we also talk about the fact that GSAE is nurturing and supportive. Even amongst the hospitality members, they don't necessarily look at each other as competition. Right. Because we're right. creating that space for them to be a resource, not just transactional relationship, but a true professional relationship where it's give and take. I know something about this, you know something about that. Right. Let's put our heads together and learn as peers. Yeah, and be better Can together. Be so powerful. Sure. All right, so I'm looking at the time. I have one more question I've just got to ask okay. you. Okay. And this is going to be really about building bench strength uh, and helping the younger folks along. We need to help new people that are new to our industry understand more about the industry, maybe get them involved in some mm -hmm. of that continuing education. How do you do that at GSAE? So we have a couple of programs that are specifically designed um, to build leaders, to build leaders within the association community. Our Leadership Academy has been around since 2008. Wow. And how brave was it yeah. to launch a huge in program in 2008? 2008, 2008 yeah. Um, but 2008, 2009, um, and it is, it's really the framework is very much association management tenets. Knowledge, turning that, that information into knowledge, that information and knowledge into practice. Um, it's very hands-on, it's experiential. It is in person for us. We're creating a cohort and a community of learners. Um, so it's important that they become connected to one another. But within that program, we're also exposing them to leaders um, that are currently in GSAE to a mentoring so cool. opportunity. Um, so we're, we're not just creating a cohort of learners together, we're creating a cohort of future leaders. They become our bench um, for future volunteers. And it's been terrific. We, we actually do have a new cohort starting up um, at the end of the fall. Um, so we're taking applications right now. Oh, that's fantastic. There are, um how many people in the cohort? We will take up to 16. 16. So these are 16 people that go through this program. Mm -hmm. And I am guessing they become very connected as well. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they still have reunions. Um, and there are lots of photos that I love to be able to post on social media of these classes that, again, we've... We've graduated more than 90 professionals uh, in the time that. period that it's that it's happened. I love so. it. It is so good for them. And it's also good for GSAE. Of course. You get them so much more connected to the organization. They want, they're going to lean in in a new way mm -hmm. after going through that type of program. I think it's brilliant that you're doing that. Okay, we've talked about a lot of things. We could go a lot. We could go even <laughs> further, but we are officially out of time. So where can people find out more about GSAE sure. and you? Absolutely. Um, we'd love for you to visit us online at gsae.org. We're also, of course, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on several of the social media sites. Um, and reach out to me personally, wendy at gsae.org. Um, I'd love to talk to you more. I think that all of you in the, in, the, in the space where if you're an association or you're even in the hospitality or a provider for that matter, uh, it'd be great to reach out to GSAE, become a member, get involved in the programming. You've heard that this is not a national program. It is local. It's focused on Georgia. Mm -hmm. So you can benefit more. And if you're a young person, you should do that so you can get involved in that cohort. Get, I would encourage if, if my, mm -hmm. one of my young people that are in my family were in the industry, I would urge them to get involved in this type of program. So I think it's terrific you're offering that. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. It was so good to see you. <laughs> and thanks to all of you 
for joining us as well. I am Mark Galvin, your host of Dunwoody Dialogues, and our show is produced by Discover Dunwoody. Today's producer is, producer is Madison Holtz, and the sound technician of today's show is Emily Inser Gibson. We always want to remind you that you can get a Dunwoody sticker, just like this one, anywhere around the city. Go check out City Hall, go to the library, NFA Burger, even Arc Coffee House has some of our stickers. Or if you can't get to any of those spots, come right down here to Discover Dunwoody's office. Our worldwide headquarters are based right in the perimeter. We'd love to give you a sticker. Thanks again for watching and follow us on our social media channels. We're everywhere at Discover Dunwoody or check out our website. All the great things that are going on at Dunwoody are mentioned on our website, discoverdunwoody.com. Well, Wendy, thanks again for joining us. It was so good to see you. Hopefully we'll get you back sometime. And thank all of you for watching as well. Now, go out, enjoy the day, and discover Dunwoody.